The honorary degree will now be conferred. I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Charles Krieger to present the honorary degree candidate, Dr. Seda Razul. Dr. Krieger is a professor and associate chair in the Department of Biomedical Physiology and Kinesiology. Dr. Krieger. Madam Chancellor, Dr. Seda Rasul is an outstanding example of volunteer dedication and commitment. She has been a leading advocate for public education, research, and community service, making significant contributions in the international community, the Vancouver community, and at this university for many years. Dr. Rasul received her degree in dentistry from the University of London followed by a Doctor of Dental Surgery from the University of Toronto. She has practiced dentistry in Vancouver for many years. Active in community service for many years, she has served on the boards of the BC Women's Hospital, the BC Children's Hospital, Outward Bound Canada, and the United Way, chairing the board of the United Way of the Lower Mainland in 2002 and co-chairing the United Way campaign in 2004. At SFU, Dr. Azul's leadership has been extraordinary. She served on the Board of Governors for six years, beginning in 2002, first as a board member, then deputy chair and chair. She was chair of the fundraising campaign for the Center for the Comparative Study of Muslim Societies and Cultures at SFU, and was a lead donor in this campaign. She was also instrumental in ensuring provincial support for the new SFU School for Contemporary Arts building in downtown Vancouver. Indeed, Dr. Razul is the embodiment of SFU's, SFU's new vision of community engagement. Her outstanding volunteerism has been recognized with a number of awards. She holds the 2006 Outstanding Leadership Award from Volunteer Vancouver and the 2007 YWCA Women of Distinction Award. And in in 2010, she was inducted into the Learning Partnerships Champion of Public Education Hall of Fame. As well, the Vancouver Sun cited Dr. Asul as one of BC's 100 Women of Influence in 2010. The United Way of Canada conferred its highest award, the Andre Malo Award for Lifetime Exemplary Commitment and Leadership, to Dr. Azul in 2006. Her leadership and advocacy are also evident internationally, where she has set up a preventative dental program in Karachi, Pakistan, and in the northern areas of Pakistan. She is a consulting dentist at Aga Khan University, where she is involved in the teaching and community dental services in Pakistan, Afghanistan, and East Africa. An important part of her work in education is the use of telelearning to connect dentists in Canada and the US with their counterparts in Asia and Africa. Dr. Razul is also engaged in raising funds for the Aga Khan University's ambitious expansion plans from donors around the world. The range of her volunteer and mentoring activities in Vancouver and BC is impressive and includes, in brief, the Aga Khan Foundation Partnership Walk for Third World Development, York House School, Leadership Vancouver, the Rotary Club, the United Way, the Ismaili Council for British Columbia, the Immigrant and Visible Women's a Minority Women's Association, the BC Automobile Association, and many other organizations. Her family's generous donation for cancer research to the BC Cancer Agency before she became a cancer survivor is also worthy of mention. Dr. Saeda Rasul's great commitment to serving and strengthening her community, both local and global, makes her a worthy recipient of this great honor. Madam Chancellor, on behalf of the Senate of this university, I ask that you now confer upon Dr. Saida Rasul the degree of honor, Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa.
Seder Azul, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Dr. Razul will be hooded by Dr. Bill Crane, Associate Vice President Academic, and Dr. Kate Ross, Registrar. It is with great pleasure that I now call on Dr. Seda Rizul for her convocation address. Dr. Rizul. <laughs> Chancellor Carol Taylor, President Andrew Petter, Chairman and Governors of the Board, Provost, Deans, Faculty, Proud Parents, and most importantly, our graduates. Good morning. I am honored and humbled to receive this recognition today from Simon Fraser University because it is an institution that has been a large part of my life for several decades, if I include the period of time I brought my daughters up to, up to the daycare at SFU. I am honored because this university values my small contribution. I am humbled because what I have achieved is in no way com comparable to the achievements of previous recipients of this honor. If I have been able to give anything to SFU, a large part of the credit for this contribution goes to three individuals, the former president, Dr. Michael Stevenson, the former Chancellor, Brent Louis, and most of all, the Chancellor Emeritus, the late Milton Wong. Milt was a friend, a mentor, and a coach. And he was the one who recommended my name for Chair of the Board of Governors. Ladies and gentlemen, after considering many topics for today's speech, I chose to speak about the empowerment of women. And this I did for two reasons. Firstly, because of my concern for the plight of women. And secondly, because the topic reminds me of my mother, who for me was a great source of inspiration, strength, and wisdom. As one of 13 children from a family of modest means, struggling to make a life in South Africa under apartheid, my mother never had the opportunity to receive a high school education. Despite these disadvantages, she took on the, ch the struggles in her life with vigor, tenacity, and optimism. Today, as my husband Feroz and I work with the Aga Khan Development Network in many parts of Africa and Asia, we see the same energy, hardiness, and self-belief in girls and women who face what to most of us would be a myriad of unassailable challenges. These women 
are oft, often subjected to unspeakable maltreatment at the hands of the clan or society to which they belong, usually based on cultural practices or in the name of religion. To illustrate, I would like to cite an example of a 12-year-old daughter of a member of our staff in Pakistan. She suffered, massive fa she suffered massive facial injuries and disfigurement from acid thrown by a teenage boy because she was more interested in her education than in an arranged marriage. Another sad part of this story is that for this heinous act, there were no consequences for the boy. Despite all the obstacles, many courageous women continue to strive to improve their own lives and those of their daughters. If you wonder how these women endure such a life, let me share some of my thoughts. Above all, the women are keen to improve their own lives. They are doing this through education and learning. While we in the West may take access to education for granted, that is not the case for women in the developing world. In many rural areas, girls attend schools in the face of threats by conservative leaders in Afghanistan and Pakistan. These leaders incite others to burn down schools and attack the students and their teachers on their way to school. Where the education of girls has been sustained, we see the building of self-esteem in women evident through their growing confidence and assertiveness. This empowerment has enabled women to become part of the decision-making process, especially to take on leadership in, in initiatives such as improve the food supply or health standards or even increase income for the family. Education has allowed women to enter critically important professions such as medicine, nursing, and teaching. This in turn has enabled them to, re to raise their social standing in their communities. Women in these areas are now looked upon as knowledgeable, skilled and productive members of society able to help their family and village improve their education, health, and social well-being. This empowerment has been instrumental in breaking down social, cultural, and economic barriers for women in the developing world, where the disparity between genders is massive. This growing confidence of women has enabled them to influence and, in some cases, define their own working conditions, which are often characterized by long days, multiple responsibilities, including raising children, supporting, supporting extended family, and putting up with the dictates of the mother-in-law who controls all family life. Unfortunately, this empowerment can be threatening to the men in the households, as independent thinking is not generally accepted and can often result in domestic violence. So as you can see, work-life balance has a totally different meaning for these women. While professional women are both looked up to for their knowledge and looked down on for their gender, they persevere with drive, determination, and passion. The results of their sustained efforts are evident in many places. We can see marked increases in literacy and numeracy, family incomes, and positions of leadership. But there are many areas in which they still need assistance. This is where you, the graduates of SFU, come in. You have been fortunate enough 
to receive an education from a great institution. Use that education to build a better life, not just for yourself and your family, but also for, for others in society. That definition of society should extend beyond British Columbia and Canada to the underprivileged parts of the world, which not only offer incredible opportunities, but also contain the most intractable poverty traps for the local women. My advice to you today is venture beyond Canada to Asia and Africa for professional opportunities for yourselves as well as to help others improve their quality of life. And when you serve, give selfish, selflessly of your talents. Believe me, speaking from personal experience, not only will this be personally and professionally, professionally rewarding, but you will come back with different perspectives. All of us need to work to raise the position of women around the world. Why do I say this? Despite all the progress made in the elevation of the status of women, we know misogyny is not confined to the less developed world or to any particular region or religion. The rights of women are being threatened everywhere as we speak. Whether the threat is to the rep reproductive rights of women in the US or subjugation of women in high growth South Asia or the inability for women to drive a car in oil rich Saudi Arabia and even the compulsion for women to ride in the back of a bus in parts of Israel. Graduates, please reflect on my words today and ask yourselves, what part can you play to stem the reversal in the prospects and opportunities for women? There are many people I would like to thank today, but that would take too much time as the list is long. I will only mention Simon Fraser University for this honor, my fellow board members during my term as a governor and as chair, and my family and friends those of you who are here today to celebrate with me and those who could not make it. I started my speech with a reference to the inspiration of my late mother. I would like to end with the inspiration of my three daughters, from whom I have learned so much about empowerment of women and in whom I see the future as being bright for women. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rizzo.